Hey everyone, I'd like to take a very introductory look at how CSS and JavaScript can affect page rendering. We're not going to be taking a look at many optimizations right now. It's first of all important to understand how it can actually affect the page. I made this really simple web page to showcase a few things. And there's only a few things, well in fact there's only two things you need to pay attention to. I'm going to reload the page and we'll look at the response. First of all, there's a CSS file right in the head of the document. Second of all, there's a script tag, about like a, a third of the way down. Well, actually, it's directly after this paragraph. And that's why these paragraphs have a border around them, just so you know that the script tag comes before that. For the remainder of this lesson, we're going to take a look at the network panel pretty much and see how these resources do affect the page rendering. So on initial load, where the, everything is really fast to load, you can see that there's nothing really significant to pay attention to. First, the document downloads, then the CSS, than the JavaScript. It's in the same order that it's in the document. Now I'm going to go to a special version of the page where the CSS actually has a delay for it to return. And the delay is in fact three seconds. And as you can see, that's a almost three second delay. But the thing to pay attention to here is when I reload the page, notice how the page rendering is actually delayed until that CSS file is ready. This is a really important part of how browsers render your page. Now it's not the case that the CSS file is taking really long and the browser is like going into a funny state. The browser is intentionally refusing to render your page because the CSS can significantly affect the way the page is rendered. So every time I reload, and keep in mind my cache is cleared right now, nothing will be displayed because that CSS file is right at the top and it's preventing the document from rendering. Now let's go to a version of the page where the JavaScript actually takes three seconds to download, but the CSS is really quick. Now, if you remember from the very first web page I showed you, the script tag is right after the first paragraph. So it's, it's right here. In fact, I can probably inspect it for you. Here it is. Now, if I refresh the page again, what's interesting is that script tag has blocked page rendering from the point at which it was initiated. So the browser was parsing that document from top to bottom. It got the CSS file. It started rendering what it could. It encountered a script tag right here. But because that has a delay of three seconds, as we can verify, it's not able to render the rest of the document. OK, so we've seen how CSS can block page rendering, and we've seen how JavaScript can block page rendering. What happens if we add the three second delay to both the CSS and JavaScript? Well, that's on the next page that we're going to see. Let's have a quick think about it. Would it be fair to say that's going to take a total of six seconds because that's three seconds for the CSS sets, three seconds for the JavaScript, so a total of six seconds? Um, well, let's check it out. OK, we see nothing being rendered. Um, even the document was ready. Uh, let me refresh again. And yeah, so the CSS takes three seconds. The JavaScript takes three seconds. Yet yeah, that didn't feel like six seconds. So let's discuss what's actually going on here. First of all, the browser starts scanning the document. It encounters a link tag, and it goes ahead and initiates a request for that CSS file. And that's seen right here. But how on earth is this JavaScript file requested so quickly? Why wasn't there a delay of three seconds before it even initiated if apparently page rendering is delayed? Well, this is where the browser's preload scanner kicks into place. Also referred to as a look ahead parser, the browser reaches this um, CSS file, it goes and initiates a download. While it will refuse to render the rest of this, there's no reason that it can't look ahead and actually see if it can find any resources, like this JavaScript file, and go ahead and download it. And in this case, that's exactly what it's doing. And that's why what we actually see are these two resources being downloaded in parallel. Browsers will attempt to download multiple resources from the same host where it can. I think it's about six to eight resources. And that's pretty much it. We've seen how CSS and JavaScript can affect page rendering. That was our goal. And in fact, while I didn't want to go into optimizations too much, just to very quickly show you, um, there's a an attribute that we can add on these script tags, and it's called the async attribute. By adding it to your script tag, you're basically telling the browser, hey, you know, don't block page rendering. Like, download it when you can and execute it once a document is ready. And and as you can see, even that script tag did indeed take over three seconds. The page still rendered pretty quickly. That's basically it for this lesson. Um, it was only about understanding how these resources can affect page rendering, and just a few extra notes. Uh, for the most part, it does make sense for CSS to block 
you do want to keep your CSS small for this very reason. And if you're wondering why it makes sense, it's because, well, if CSS didn't block, you would see like the browser actually render some of the contents that it finds in the HTML. Suddenly CSS would download and it would change the visual appearance of what the browser has already rendered. And this is sometimes referred to as a flash of unstyled content. Moving on to the second bullet point, the async attribute on script tags is a great little thing. Um, if you're concerned about the order at which multiple script files can download, uh, then do have a look at the defer attribute. Now moving on to blocking resources, um, I want to put some emphasis on the fact that blocking resources are only a small factor of potential web page bottlenecks. Just because you optimize these two in particular, that being CSS and JavaScript, doesn't suddenly mean your page will become super fast. There are many other potential web page bottlenecks. Now onto the preload scanner. Earlier, when we were talking about it, we saw how it went through the document and even it wasn't going to render that page at that point in time, it would still try to download these resources that it found as soon as it encountered them. But there's a catch. The preload scanner won't execute your JavaScript. So if you think about these, you know, these classic analytics um, snippets where, you know, it sort of dynamically inserts a script tag into the DOM, well, that's actually working against the preload scanner. So if you are doing that with some of your code, you do want to make sure that it is the faster route. And I would say if there's one thing that you take away from all this, it's that only that which is critical should actually be allowed to negatively impact the page performance. CSS or JavaScript should really deserve to block page rendering. It shouldn't just be the case by default. So if you find that the CSS for your entire website is blocking one very small part of your web page, you might want to consider splitting some of that out, which means that the critical CSS is downloaded much faster. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. I'll see you later.